Welcome back, everybody, for another episode of Living Hope, a weekly journey designed to provide hope, inspiration, and education for those living with pancreatic cancer. Sharing the real life stories of those really affected by this disease and how they deal with it on a daily basis. With your host, the woman who's been riding this journey longer than many, 19 years and counting, Roberta Luna, welcome. Thank you, it's wonderful to be back. I love doing this show. I'm still out of my comfort zone, but we'll get there. So maybe I don't. I don't know. I don't know. The biggest know, problem you have, we just got to get you to talk up. You want to get so soft. You're so loud in real life and so soft. Oh, in the... <laughs> thank you. I'll have to tell my kids that because they never thought that when I would yell at them, they would say, "When are you going to yell, Mom?" But, <laughs> but well, today <laughs> we're going to yell from the highest mountaintop. You have some big guests here in the world of pancreatic cancer. Uh, we were just talking to a professor, a researcher here at UCI on the phone that they're going to stop by and see later. And he says, I got to tell you, she's one of the heavyweights here. <laughs> I said, okay, I didn't know that. So bring him in. Who you, who'd you bring with you today? Here? Definitely a heavyweight in the pancreatic cancer world. So greatly appreciate both of them being here. I have Aggie Hirschberg, who is the founder of the Hirschberg um, Pancreatic Cancer Research Foundation. I don't know if I got that right, but at least I got all <laughs> the words in there. Close. I know we're close. And her daughter, Lisa Manham, who is the executive director, I want to say, right. I think, if I remember correctly. Yep. Both here have a, um, a great story, and I really want to dive in and have them share that. And I want to start with thanking you both for being here. I just love you both. I'm just really happy that you agreed to do this. <laughs> so I'm really happy to, to have you both here. Um, Aggie, I know you and Ron met fell in love and married in a really short time. Three months. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was really a, what they call it, a whirlwind um, courtship there. What was it about him that made you fall in love so quickly? Oh, my goodness. Just who he was. He was just a real dynamite. And, and somehow we balanced each other so well almost immediately because I was a doer and he was a, a thinker mm -hmm. and the thinker has to have a doer and uh, we were partners in in life and in business for 10 years before he was diagnosed what type of business were you in together we were global distributors for adidas the oh. the brand so oh. so it was it was it was a great very exciting 10 years and about and he started to he started to have symptoms, and had we had him. What were his symptoms exactly? Um, he was three hundred pounds, so he a lost weight, which was he was so happy. Mm. And I was happy, but he was falling asleep. There, he was a type two diabetic, and. Uh, at one point, he we, we took him to a hospital in in uh, Boston, and he was <coughs> diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And that was 1996. And uh, it, because we loved each other so much, and the partnership was so strong, um, we were partners even in this disease. So you know, he did the, he had to do this. I did this. So the partnership continued. And unfortunately, um, he passed seven months late, later, and I didn't think that I could abandon the what we were fighting for. We were fighting for for a cure. We were fighting to live. We had in in 1996 a one percent chance. So, um, and. I went to UCLA where he was uh, treated, loved his doctors, and I said, uh, where's the pancreatic cancer program? And they said, well, we have surgery, but we don't have a program. So I said, in that case, you do, you do now. Yeah. And that was, uh, he passed away in, in uh, May, by July, the foundation was formed, and we opened up the first laboratory coordinated with uh, um, surgery the department of surgery um, in uh, early 1998 
Wow, that's very moved very quickly. Yeah. Well, you got married fast, and you got the foundation going fast. Right? <laughs> I'm, a mo I'm a fast that's mover. That's right. You're a mover and a shaker. You don't let any any grass grow under your feet. <laughs> the, the 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 only hitch that that came up for me about you know eighteen months, two months later, in 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 the business world, if you start you start a project, you know making coffee cups uh, you have probably 18 months to get it successful so you start it you build it you start selling it you, and you start to get paid that was 18 months so I said this is this is going to be so easy okay it's a brand new business <laughs> <laughs> not quite so easy <laughs> the brand new business two years from now we're going to have the cure okay what so this is now 24 years later, and we're close. Uh, but I overestimated my my idea. <laughs> I think we all did, especially getting that diagnosis is something we want to happen yesterday. So I think that's pretty typical. Um, I want to go back just a little bit, if you don't mind. And did Ron receive any treatment at all? He he did not qualify. He had surgery. Uh, Dr. Isakoff was his, his uh, oncologist. Um, we attempted the surgery with Dr. Reber, also fam a very famous doctor, and, and he was unable to do the surgery at that time. Now today, th those I incidences are much less, and uh, you can easily go from chemotherapy when you re reduce the tumor or the surroundings of the tumor, you are then you can qualify for the surgery. Was his tumor located around the vein in the arteries or anything? Yes. Okay. Okay. It was, wow. it was all in all the wrong places. Yeah. That's um, unfortunately something I, I share with him. And um, so I really appreciate hearing how far we are coming a little bit further. And it's um, I'm, I'm sorry that we didn't have that for him at that time. You said that, um, so he was not able to do any treatment at all. Where, was there any? The, he had chemotherapy. Oh, he did so have chemotherapy. He did have ke okay. chemotherapy. Uh, and I think at some point, maybe five, six months in, he said, I don't want any more chemo. I just want to live. I want to live with my wife. I want, and he, he's, he's uh, stopped. Yeah. You had a very active life, I'm assuming, before the diagnosis. Of course. How did that diagnosis change? And once he decided to stop the treatment because he wanted to spend more time with you, were you able to do the things you both love to do? We were still doing the things that we love to do. We were fishing in Mexico in December, three or four months after uh, we got the diagnosis. So we continued to live, we continued to travel and tried to ignore it and, and live life. Yeah. Lisa, I know Ron was your father, and I, I lost my father as well to pancreatic cancer. And you know, they always say that our fathers are our first loves. I yeah. think the first men that we really can become associated with in love. Um, do you want to share a little bit what kind of relationship you had with your dad? Um, Ronnie was my stepdad. Oh, he okay. was my mom's second husband, but we were very close. Um, I was, at the time, ha aspiring to have a career in the retail fashion world and he had that was his business so he was definitely a um an advisee and i was when he was diagnosed and i was in college at ucla or coming out of college right at in that time so he was around for a really influential part of my life mm -hmm. um and ultimately for me it was seeing my mom go through the caregiver side and um and then my my stepbrother and stepsister what they were going through and all of that experience it's kind of surreal when you think back about about that time it is and that that helped you make the decision to help your mom get involved and get this organization foundation going or? um well sort of not exactly <laughs> um because my mom started the foundation and I was working full time for um, Macy's or the Federated Group. And I was the store manager of a, a big a Century City, big store, big store with like a great career projective there. And I got pregnant with my oldest son, who's now 22. 
and my mom and John, my brother, had just done the first LA Cancer Challenge, mm -hmm. our 5K, which is still around. And I was on maternity leave and my mom was dealing with other stuff and John was dealing with, with his stuff and they were like, we don't, we need your help. So I agreed to just help while I was on maternity leave and um, basically never went back. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how it, that's how it went. And we had, we had lots of conversations because I had, I had never envisioned that I would be the executive director of a foundation or it wasn't even, we weren't even talking about that back then. It was just, you know, help me out. And, um, but I loved event planning. So, um, and I had a strong communications background. So I think all of that sort of really, um, helped, helped us in the beginning. And I remember talking to my mom and saying, like, mom, we have a great relationship. Like, I don't want to go work with you. And then that could potentially change, right? change. I wouldn't want to do anything to impact our relationship. And she was like, no, no, this is, this is not going that that's not what this is going to be about. And, um, and I mean, by golly, we've worked together now for, for 20, more than 20, 22, yeah, almost 23 years. We see each other six days a week, most of the time, you know, f five days a week. And, um, and our, it's just, it's been a blessing from the sense of a mother daughter relationship and what we've been able to do together. And we have a really great, um, division of responsibilities and, uh, huge respect for each other and what what each other's strengths are my mom basically deals with she's she's got the medical understanding she deals with the doctors and the science and she's our conduit to ucla and and to the patients and i'm really have always taken the side more the operational side the fundraising and the the uh, the fundraising events the communication the website that kind of thing so we have a great yeah can i can i just <clears throat> mention one thing Ronnie was in hospice at home in, uh, on bed and he was counseling you to what where you should be working and he wasn't <laughs> always happy with the with your choices and then right. you came in <laughs> you came in and you said where you were and he just goes <laughs> he gave me a thumbs up thumbs up it was like and he could hardly talk but he was so happy yeah yeah, and unfortunately, you know, these things don't end the way we want them to end, but it's refreshing and it's inspirational that you can take that pain and grief and hurt and do something positive because a lot of people don't. They do something negative with what they're feeling and doing. And um, I know just for myself, just attending your symposiums for I don't know how many years now um, has been wonderful. So and just watching the two of you work together, I really you really can feel that and not just you, but your staff. And I know you. you have you don't have a large staff. No. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about your staff? How many <laughs> how many staff members you do have? There. We have a surprisingly small number of staff and thank the Lord that they are dedicated and we've built a, a really we call it a family a family environment um and we're really lucky i think four of us four of us were touched by pancreatic cancer maybe 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 okay. even five yeah right, uh, personally so that give, gives everybody the you know the energy and the heart i it's kind of a, a strange question but it's funny because i i noticed that a lot of us that do have a connection, we do one of two things. We either jump in and help or we go the other way. Do you see that as well? And do you have any explanation as to why that happens? Some people want to, I don't want to be near this cancer ever again as long as I live. I don't want to hear about it. I, I, I'm going to go into the corner. So it, yes, very surprisingly how many people turn away and, and walk away. And uh I'm just the one that yeah, didn't want to walk. I wanted to continue. I wanted to fight. I wanted to win. And I think that remains our, our challenge with now being 24 years. And you have people who've, we have some people who've been involved from the beginning. God, thank God for them. Mm -hmm. um, and others who, they, they'll come in and out. There'll be years where they have things going on in their lives that make them not able to come to the, the LA Cancer Challenge or be a part of the symposium or mm -hmm. whatever. But um, we just try and maintain that connection and let them know we're here and we still need them. 
Um, but people's motivations and lives change, I guess. Well, it's hard. Like I said, I, I know, I mean, just watching what my dad went through and my family, but my dad especially, because he weighed 170 pounds and was very athletic. I mean, he wasn't athletic, but well built. He looked like he went to the gym, even though all he did was like gardening and mechanics and that kind of thing, you know, <laughs> but he had strong arms. We used to call them Popeye arms, but he had like strong arms. But to watch him go from 170 to 70 pounds was devastating. And it's not something any of us want to see, but it made me want to do something, not just walk away. And, you know, I know we have to respect those people, what they can deal with and what they can do. But I really admire those people that can stick it out. Like you've been doing for over 20 years and just, you know, stick it out and, and bring the awareness that you're bringing. I really do appreciate that. I have to say that <laughs> I'm not sure if this is a good admission or not, but I was um, looking for something and I was Googling, which I tell people not to Google pancreatic cancer, <laughs> but of course I give great advice and I don't always follow it. Um, the thing that actually drew me to you guys, I have to say, was the logo because my last name is Luna. I collect mm. moons and that just struck me. So um, can you tell me a little bit about that logo? Yeah. The original logo had a ton of meaning. I mean, it still oh, this, does our reiteration of our logo. The, the yeah. sun, the sunburst. The, with the moon, you had a, the moon yes. and had the rays look like and, rays of sun. And it was, it was exactly all about Ronnie's life. It was, you know, the sunshine, the travel, the world, the stars, the, the water, uh, and the, and the 54. There were 54 sort of rays it's around rays. It representing the 54 years of his life. The four stars were the four, the four, four kids. kids. Oh, nice. um, he was a avid uh, boater and loved the ocean. That was so the ocean. <laughs> so yeah, there was, there was a lot of meaning in that. And then in our reiterated version or a more modernized streamlined version, all of those sort of, um, touch points are still there just in a more it's updated way. It's a little more way. simple version. Yeah. yeah, I'll have to go back and recheck because like I said, that, <laughs> yeah. that, that logo stuck with me. And that's yeah. actually why um, I contacted you yeah. guys because the logo is what drew me in and that's when I found your symposium. And I don't remember how many years ago that was, but it was quite a, a long, long time. time ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've been doing it for 15 years, the symposium, so, mm -hmm. so it has to be at least 15. Yeah, somewhere in there. I may not have been there in the early days, but at some point I did come in and just really appreciate the information and what you guys have done. Yeah. I know because of what we've been through with the pandemic, it didn't happen last year. Is it a chance going to come back next year? Absolutely. Next next April. Oh, and good. and uh, let me say to you that the two, two events that are meaningful to me is uh, first the symposium because my idea was why why can't the doctors and the patients be in the same room and talk about talk and ask all the questions and and just you know person to person now that you, you know it turned out to be now 150 people but but the intimacy still remains and and that's so important to me and it's very important for a doctor to you know to 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 touch that patient says Lisa, it's happy to see you. Yeah, I'm happy to see you. You know, just the just the communication and the contact. And then the second thing I love is during the summer, I had um, patients come to a barbecue, and we don't have a program. We don't have music. We have food. We have, <laughs> we have tables, and we it's just to encourage everybody to speak to each other. And nothing is more wonderful than seeing the good-looking surgeon come in his shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Show off those legs, huh? <laughs> And so everybody's happy, uh, and it, it just... But it's the, just special and it's nice to i'm sorry it's yeah. nice to connect with the survivors as well because i actually thank you i have been to a couple of your barbecues and it's great connecting with the with the survivors yeah. and i was just going to say that it's a lot of times those conversations that happen at the table where we we are hearing we my staff is hearing what they're talking about what are their questions and that's guiding us and what do we need to be including in the symposium because the symposium as you know is both part um all the medical science updates and talking about every sort of different topic as it relates to pancreatic cancer but then now we have this um, second half which is a patient mm -hmm. um, panel and being able to hear from each other and hear stories and 
did this work for you? Did you try CBD? You know, all those types of questions have really, a lot of them came out of the barbecue. And, and, and the best part is we often, often have uh, the newly diagnosed uh, per persons come and to sit with somebody that's 10 years out or 12 years out or five years out, it gives them such hope. Yeah, it really does. And such yeah. pro promise. Did everybody get something out of it? Yeah, we do. And I'm sorry we're getting low on time. It just seems to really go really quickly. But, and I'd love to, I'm learning, I think I'd like to leave cliffhangers for the next show. So we really want to have somebody from Hirschberg come back. I know you guys are very, very busy. And we'd love to have you come back yeah. as well because there's other things I do want to discuss, some events that you have coming up. But just to leave us a little bit, do you have any pearls of wins with wisdom maybe for caregivers? Oh, gosh. One of the things that the doctor, uh, Ronnie's doctor, Isaacoff, said to me, he came in, came to the house, visit, visited often, and he, it was, whatever I was doing, he said, Aggie, you're his wife. You're not his nurse. Be the wife. Which is very difficult to do because that's exactly what you want. Right. You, you know, you what, what you have to, what you, th know is your responsibility and uh, but I think that's one that I try to share with other families you know husbands or wives is uh, to have the moment uh, your, your moments not just the disease don't it's not, you know, yeah, your it's life not. is not about the disease your life is about your relationship right and how you love each other and you know how what how can you communicate and that's what you want to take with you um real quick in the last few minutes that we have lisa do you want to give us your upcoming the dates that are coming up and we yeah. want to have more people coming on to talk about that in detail but real quickly please yes absolutely can't wait to talk more in detail we've got <laughs> on september 12th our ninth annual tour to pier which is an outdoor stationary cycling event on the manhattan beach pier um it is so much fun and super inspirational and then uh, one month later is the LA Cancer Challenge 5K walk run at UCLA on Halloween morning, October 31st. Um, then just a week later is the LA Marathon where we have our Hirschberg training team, a group of 30 plus runners who will be, uh, have been training and raising funds for pancreatic cancer. And we go out and support them and have an event um, to support them in their race. But for right now, if, the most important thing for everybody, if you want to get involved and help, is go to tourtopeer.com or lacancerchallenge.com and, and learn more because both events are such a great ways to, to take action, to be part of the community, to be part of the cure, to join the fight. Right, and, and thank you very much for that. And thank you for coming, both of you. I really appreciate you guys being here, and I love you guys so much and what you're doing. And <laughs> thank you for making me a part of that when we do. And again, just thank you for being here. And we look forward to having more Hersberg to come and talk more in detail the events that we have coming up. So you thank you. It. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, there you have it. Another reason you should always join us here on this weekly journey to provide hope, inspiration, and education for those living with pancreatic cancer. Sharing the real-life stories of those really affected by this disease and how they deal with it on a daily basis. So if you'd like to share your story, hey, please contact us. That's what this show's for. Or if you know anyone who needs help, like right now, there is a place to call several places. We'll give you one of them. Patient services at 877-2-PAN-CAN for more help and information. That's 877, the number 2, P-A-N-C-A-N for the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. Or reach out to our guests here today at the Hirschberg Foundation. Lots of resources, lots of people to help you on your journey. Living with hope, your journey with pancreatic cancer. Right here in Orange County's only community radio station, octalkradio.net. Streaming live from the University of California, Irvine's Beale Applied Innovation Center.